the Revo Point Metro X scanner. It scans in three modes, blazer mode, full field or auto turntable. Today I'm going to use the Metro X in laser mode to scan this multi-tool. So if you want to see how I get on and whether it can do it, stick around and I'll show you. So today in this video I'm going to scan this multi-tool in laser mode. I'm going to use cross lines and parallel lines to build up a picture. I'm going to scan it in four scans. I'm going to scan it from the top and tip it over 90 degrees, scan it again from the top, tip it over 90 degrees and so on and so on. I could stand it up and scan it that way and spin it all the way around. However, the problem I have with this is with this particular scanner is the depth of field where when you're talking the distance from the scanner to the top of the item and then further on down to the marker dots when those distances are great the scanner really has trouble picking it up because the depth of field isn't good so if i put the item that way around and then put marker dots all the way around it where the depth of field is not so great the scanner works great so anyway let me set up and i'll show you what i mean so as you can see i've got my pyramids i've got my domes I've got them all set up around the item, so I can easily flip it, just make sure it's nice and solid. Doesn't look that solid. So, I'm just going to put a little bit of blue tack on the front. Okay. So first of all, then let's fire up the software. I'm using Revo scan for Metro X 5.6.7. I'm going to do a marker scan, cross lines, global marker. Let's start a new scan. And away we go. And I'm basically just going to capture the global markers. Now if I don't touch these, once I've scanned them, I should be able to use this, use this global marker scan for every one of the four scans. Pause it there. Complete the scan. Cloud scan, cross lines. I'm going to increase the scanning distance to 400 just so it picks up that little bit more, giving the depth of field a little bit more of a chance. And away we go. Now when I'm scanning it now and it falters like I see how it's faltered, it's stopped and then it jerks forward. That's not my crappy editing. That's basically the, the, uh, the software struggling because it can't find the markers. And it's because of this depth of field issue I'm on about. So it'll scan this and it'll scan it perfectly well. You've just got to be mindful of that depth of field issue. See, it needs more markers. Okay, let's just pause it for a second. Have a look where we are. Not too bad, a few gaps here and there maybe. And some of those little nooks and crannies just there. Just 
click on new scan rotate it now then I haven't touched the markers there so it should be okay cloud scan okay so you saw the first one work I'm just going to rush it through now then and just keep swapping it over that looks okay as I say some of these little gaps here you struggle with these sometimes with these laser scanners because they just can't I just can't penetrate it with this many laser lines so I'm going to turn it over now then for the side being careful not to touch any of the markers now because I've scanned it on the one side and flipped it 180 degrees I've almost got all the detail really there's just going to be maybe just a little bit down the middle here which I couldn't get the scanner to properly however there's little nooks and crannies where, there's, where the, uh, the, the cross lasers don't get into very well so on these two scans I'm going to do them on the parallel lines and the parallel lines penetrate a little bit more into these gaps so I'm set up for my global marker I've got my parallel lines set and let's go that one off turn it over okay that's all the scanning done then let's go over to process the Revo Point software, I think this software is streets above anybody else. We've got four scans. Top, bottom, side, and the other side. Now we've got to mix them all together. And we've also got to get rid of all this junk. You have to process them first though, by fusion. We'll do all four together and we'll do them at point two. Click apply and wait. All four scanners have fused. There's the top, bottom, side, another side. The next job then is to get rid of all those bits of crap. And then there's a whole host of tools on there now that to do this, which are brilliant. Selection tool, as in square. We just select square bits, polygon tool, any shape you want, as long as it's square lines obviously, the lasso, the connected domain tool, now this is brilliant I think, if you basically just click on that, it selects it, so if you think to yourself, well, that's all I want, you could inverse the selection and then delete it. There's the line tool. If you go from right to left, it deletes everything underneath. If you go from left to right, it deletes everything above. Excellent. So what am I going to do with this one then? Let's try the line tool get rid of that lot we'll have the polygon tool for this
we'll get rid of that. And we've got a square tool for this to get rid of this bit of blue tack. That little bit there. I'll just quickly go through the other three. So the next step on the job is to merge. So we select all four scans. Feature alignment and preview. See if we can work it out. As you can see, it's aligned it perfectly. So let's generate the model. So here's the merge scan then. Let's do a little bit more tidy up now then. Go to isolation. This basically finds anything that uh, looks like it's dangling in midair. That doesn't that doesn't have that doesn't belong. Get rid of that. Overlap. Because I've joined four scans together, it'll work out anything that it thinks is there twice. Let's get rid of that. Let's have a quick look. This is the point cloud. Let's merge it into a into a mesh. So because I've used it at point two, let's mesh it at about point two, which is about six on the uh, on the quality scale. Click apply. There we have a meshed model. Let's have a quick look around it. hasn't gone into the deep screw holes but they again they are deep mixing a little bit around where the tool goes but I think you'll agree it's a good scan Got a fair bit round by where the battery connects. Nice little scan. Got a little bit floating here. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Yeah. Now what you would do next if you wanted to is to fill the holes. If I do fill holes, select curved, it'll detect all the holes in the mesh and it'll offer to uh, fill them for me. And as you can see, all the little places would have got like a green outline or a hole. And this is the beauty of this software now. You can choose what to fill and what not to fill. So let's say I wanted to just fill those around there. Because it does a it does a fair job of this. Click apply. And boom, they're gone. And it does a fair job. So detecting the others. Excellent software. So this is the first of a few videos in this series that I've made with the Metro X scanning this multi-tool. Scanned it in cross lines and I've scanned it in parallel lines. 
The next video I'm going to make is going to be scanning a impact driver, but I'm going to be scanning it standing up. And hopefully I'll just scan it in a couple of scans and join it that way. But as I've said to you before, when the scanning distance from the scanner to the object and then down to the dots is a greater distance, you have trouble with it. So I'm going to have to work something out. If you like what you've seen in this video, please do me a favour and like it and subscribe to the channel because there's more to come. There's more in the series of the Metro X and there's more on my Creality Otter light scanning and I'm soon to be having the Creality Samoon S1 scanner where I should be doing some comparisons between the Metro X and the Samoon S1. Thanks for watching.